Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Short Circuit. I'm your host, Daryl Willis, Corporate Vice President of Energy and Resources at Microsoft, and I'm excited to continue these podcasts as we delve into challenges and trends around the energy transition. In each episode, we hear from industry experts and leaders who share their insights and perspectives on what's happening across the energy sector. In the next several episodes of uh, The Short Circuit, I'm excited to talk with underrepresented founders of and CEOs of clean tech startups. And with that, I'd like to jump in and say a little bit more uh, about our guests. So Celine King is the founder and CEO of Greener. And thank you so much, Celine, for being here with me today. And we're looking forward to this conversation. And I'd like to start by having you to spend a few minutes talking to us about your personal background and what sparked your interest in climate technology. Welcome, Celine. Thanks so much. Well, um, first and foremost, um, it's a real pleasure to be here, and I appreciate the opportunity to have this discussion. Um, my background is a combination of data science and science. Um, I studied business analytics and biology at Fairfield University in my undergraduate time, and then I had two very formative work experiences before starting at Greener. Um, I conducted climate change research at UConn's Coastal Biogeochemistry Dynamics Lab, which was focused on understanding how climate change induced factors impacted marine environments. Um, and then following that, I worked at Greenbacker Capital, which is a private equity firm focused on sustainable infrastructure and renewable assets. Um, and so for me, my journey into climate tech has not at all been a straight line. Um, I initially thought that I wanted to be doing climate science and research. I wanted to be in the lab, I wanted to be in the field, but I quickly realized that science is only as good as our ability to execute on the findings. Um, and I think you'll see this recurring theme that oftentimes urgent cli climate research is dismissed or delayed um, from being implemented in the business world. And there's this huge gap at the pace in which we can address climate issues because of it. And so that said, despite my love for science, um, I felt called to take action through driving measurable impact in business operations. Um, and for me, that came in the form of accountability and transparency through emissions reporting. Um, and then it was a question of where am I going to direct this energy and which industry? And so through a lot of research, it became clear to me that while companies are very good at measuring their direct emissions, when mm -hmm. it comes to the supply chain, there's a huge lack of visibility um, and there's a lot of inaccurate measurements that are going on within that. And so um, the supply chain, just for context, actually accounts for up to 90% of an organization's emissions. Um, and within that, the trucking industry is the largest sector it bears the majority of the responsibility. Um, and so that is how I got to where I am today. That is uh, fantastic. And one of the things that we spend a lot of time, Celine, talking about at Microsoft is just the, the impact of the climate crisis on everyone on the planet and the fact that it will disproportionately impact uh, communities of color. And so the diversity uh, of the ecosystem that's going to help us deliver on all of the ambitions around net zero by 2050 or sooner are really, really important. And what your company is doing is very, very interesting. I'd love for you to tell me a little bit more about Greener and the carbon accounting platform that you're building specifically for the trucking industry. So much of the world depends on the trucking industry. And I don't think it's always appreciated the, uh, the opportunity that's in front of us in that industry as we think about climate change. So tell us a little bit more about what you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. And um, they are a critical component of the economy. It's sometimes thankless. Um, so I would first start yeah. by saying that it's um, important to recognize that right now there's increasing regulation, shareholder and consumer pressure for large businesses to disclose their supply chain emissions. And of all the sectors that make up the supply chain, like we just talked about, mm -hmm. um, the trucking industry is responsible for up to 72% of an organization's carbon footprint, which wow. makes them the largest target for emissions reporting and reduction. And so what this means is a new and urgent demand for emissions data that has never been seen before by the industry. And they're not given the proper resources and technology to do this reporting. So they're under immense pressure to report something that they don't fully understand. Um, and this is really where Greener comes into play. Mm -hmm. We're a carbon accounting platform that's built specifically for the trucking industry to automatically measure fleet emissions and generate regulation compliant reports at the push of a button. 
Um, our software integrates into existing asset tracking systems and fleet management software to collect data directly from every vehicle in a fleet, which eliminates the need for any manual inputs from users. It also ensures the reliability of our data down to the vehicle level. And so we're then able to generate um, uh, we're able to generate regulation compliant emission reports that are aligned with the greenhouse gas protocol, um, which is one of the most widely adopted international frameworks. And so um, my startup journey has been one of the hardest and most rewarding things that I've ever done on a personal and a professional level. Uh, I feel that I fell in love with solving a problem that's bigger than me, bigger than all of us, like you just said. And so for that reason, there's always more work to be done. There's always more learning to do, um, but it definitely helps when you feel like you're up against an impossible problem or challenge um, to remember the impact that you can have. And so that's been a motivating factor for me. And it's been nonstop learning, constant and quick decision making, um, building a team that's all in. And I think most importantly, learning how to build credibility as a young person and a woman in an old school industry. Um, that has been a unique and interesting challenge within itself. You know, for Microsoft, Celine, uh, us being a part of uh, the Greentown Labs journey, is uh, really important and really exciting. I remember when that building was actually a grocery store, uh, the, the lab that we created in Houston. And it was it was also a pleasure to have you with us at Serial Week back in uh, March of, of this year. And, and speaking about being a woman and a young woman, as you just articulated in this field, I would love for you to say a few more words about some of the biggest challenges you faced as a emerging CEO who happens to be young, who happens to be female, Tell me a little bit more about some of the challenges you faced and what's helped you most along the journey so far. Well, I would start by saying that there has not been a single easy day since we got started. And um, I feel that myself and my team, we always end up asking ourselves, how hard can it be? And then it ends up being just that hard. Um, and so it, just to touch on that point about what it's like to be in a woman selling in a male dominated industry, um, yeah. it has been very interesting um, because we're not the typical profile um, of the people that they're used to seeing. And so um, in some ways, there's been challenges that are unique to that. But at the same time, I think it's something that I can use to my advantage. Um, they're very curious about what we have to say, um, but also for us to be aware that sustainability has not been front of mind for the industry and being mindful that we're trying to partner with them. Um, we're trying to help them through this um, and do some handholding has definitely been important. And so um, I think one of the biggest challenges has been continuing to hit our milestones while running as lean as possible um, mm -hmm. with the capital that we've raised. And I know that challenge is not unique to us, um, but when you don't have an unlimited budget to build a company, you're forced to think 10 times smarter, to be scrappy, to be gritty in order to continue to grow. And mm -hmm. so every single decision that we've made has to move the needle in some way because we can't afford to waste our time and money. And so in that sense, from the start, every decision has felt weighted. Um, we didn't have the capital to bring on our own sales force. And so that means we're going to be boots on the ground, meeting with trucking companies in person, going to their headquarters, going to the state association events. Um, and so that's what was necessary in order to generate early leads. And then a now obvious challenge um, that was extraordinarily hard in our early days was selling a product into an industry that fell outside of our network. Um, and so there was a huge learning curve in order for us to learn their language, to empathize with their pain points, um, and to learn the different classes of trucks and the different blends of fuels um, in order to gain, again, that credibility. And so... For us, the best way to do that was to have hundreds of conversations with different carriers and just listen, not pitch anything. And in retrospect, those early conversations ended up being our earliest customers and our closest relationships. And so when we talk about what has been the most helpful, the first thing that comes to mind is a meeting John Skirbo, the president of Daybreak Express. They were our first beta test pilot customer, and they trusted us to do what we promised we would do when we had nothing. And that was how we got started. Um, second to that, I think um, our team, I, I really sincerely don't believe that we would be here without the people that we have and their attitude towards solving impossible technical problems. And attitude is a huge part of our culture. And they're all in. Um, they're always committed to finding a way. And because of that, some of the most cutting edge and innovative solutions in carbon accounting have been made by my team. Um, and so it's a very inspiring uh, workplace to be in. And then lastly, and uh, if we take a step back, I mm -hmm. think 
greener was born at the right time. There's a heightened attention to emissions reporting, particularly within the supply chain. Emerging regulations have given us tailwinds. um, And I think generally you'll see that the world is wanting to see a more sustainable business model. Um, And so for all of those reasons, it's been extraordinarily helpful. And I would imagine that uh, as I think about what we're talking about in the carbon accounting platform for the trucking industry, that there's lots of data and calculations and know-how that's required. And I'd love for you to say a little bit about what do you think the role of cloud and AI technology is going to be uh, as you think about the future? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Everything we do today is done in the cloud, whether it's hosting, storage, or computing. And it's allowed us to build in a very flexible way and most importantly, to scale very efficiently as we've grown. And so we're currently using AI only in our forecasting, but it is, of course, a reoccurring topic in all of our whiteboard meetings. It's not far down the line in our product roadmap. And so for us, we're collecting data directly from the vehicle, um, from its engine, its telematic control unit, the odometer. There's no estimations being done in our calculations because everything's primary data. And so for myself and my team, the best application of AI is actually in trend analysis. And so whether that's supervised or unsupervised learning, being able to identify hidden trends and the emissions performance data of our users is actually going to allow us and enable us to detect relationships between certain attributes and data points we're collecting in order to make very targeted recommended solutions for users to reduce their carbon footprint, um, to save money, to save time, and to run more efficiently. I got one last question for you, and it's really about the vision in the future and where the direction of travel, where Greener is headed. And so I'd love for you to say a few words in closing about the future of Greener, and the energy industry as a whole and your role in it. Absolutely. Um, Well, I think we're just getting started. I can envision a world where every truck you drive by has a sticker on the back of it that says emissions tracked by Greener. Um, We're striving towards becoming the gold standard for emissions tracking and reporting within the trucking industry um, Mm -hmm. because there's no one else that's doing what we're doing at the level of automation and accuracy that we are. And so I think two, three, four years, you'll see that emissions reporting is going to be a norm in the industry in the same way that safety and maintenance is. And Greener will be the one that's supporting trucking companies and fleet managers in their report and their reporting and compliance journey. And so um, I think a more important part of that in terms of what's up next, we're very interested in exploring what it will look like to integrate Greener at the OEM level as fleet mm-hmm. management and telematics become more and more digitalized. Um, we want to explore what that opportunity could hold for us. And so um, I think what I'm personally most excited about is all of the innovation that's going into the trucking industry, particularly in the biofuel space. Um, And so there has been a lot of improvements within biodiesel and renewable diesel, um, a lot of alternative fuels that are um, supplements um, to the EVs that are now uh, in place. And one of Greener's um, sweet spots is tracking emissions for alternative fuels. And so as that trend continues to grow, uh, I think we'll be a good partner there. And then on the topic of the energy industry, um, it's coming. And I think that we're very excited to be a part of that in a a sector and an industry um, that contributes a lot to it. There's a lot of Mm -hmm. opportunity there. um, And we're able to support trucking companies and fleets through it in a way that um, they're able to view it as an opportunity as well. Fantastic. And uh, with that, uh, I want to say thank you for your time, Celine. And I'm really, really excited about what you're un- up to and what's underway at Greener. I think it it's these kinds of activities and these companies like yours that are going to really help us enable and deliver on the energy transition and, and net zero ambitions on the planet. So thank you for what you're doing and thank you for being the leader that you are. And we're happy to be in, in, in partnership and to even know you. And we wish you and Greener all the best and so happy to know that you're affiliated with uh, Greentown Labs. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And I also want to say to our audience, thank you. And this brings us to the end of this episode of The Short Circuit. And we will continue our conversations going forward with climate tech startups and underrepresented founders and CEOs. And until next time, see you later.